Hello, welcome to the Ref Show. Keith Hackett and Glenn Turner are with us. There's really only one place to start, the apparent Mourinho meltdown. But does he have to put the image of the Premier League into the pot with him? I know that Keith Hackett with us has some strong views on this subject and what happened in the Chelsea game involving referee John Moss uh, this weekend. And as if to underline the point, uh, it was a generally, again, good weekend for referees in the Premier League. So is this one manager really out of step with that? But before we get down uh, to business, uh, a warm welcome as well to some new viewers across Asia and other parts in the world. We have a You Are The Ref link up, we're delighted to say, with the major sports website, sportskeeda.com, who are sharing this show. So welcome along to all our new viewers. Glenn and Keith, uh, Mourinho in a moment, but let's discuss the big derbies on Sunday, first of all, and especially the North East one, Sunderland, Newcastle. Keith, there were some eyebrows raised uh, on this website, among our experts, uh, about the appointment of Robert Madley to this game. And indeed, one big decision swung it, didn't it? Sunderland's way, the first goal in a 3-0 victory. Big call, not only a penalty, uh, but uh, a sending off for denying a scoring opportunity. Your verdict on that? Well, I shuddered when I saw the appointment because, you know, you need on these big derby games people of experience uh, and he hasn't got it. I know you've got to evolve over a period of time and gain experience, but not at, at that key point of a, a, of a North East derby. I've refereed those a couple of three times. They're tough. Colaccini, was it, was, it, was, it, was it correct to send him off? I know there's a lot oh, of debate uh, among referees. Look, look, there's no question it was a penalty kick. I have no doubts, and he was in a good position to judge it, in fairness to him, uh, but it was not a denial. Uh, the, the criteria for denial, the probability of being able to control the ball, to then put it back in the back of the net, was not there. What did you think, Glenn? Definitely, I mean, I absolutely concur with what Keith said. There's no doubt... You know, to, without getting too technical under law 12, that that's a foul. The ball wasn't within playing distance um, and he's in his bars him over. Great, great call at that point. Great call. I'm, I'm with him at that point. Definitely not a red card. OK, well, double whammy, said Steve McLaren, the Newcastle manager, after Colin Cheney's dismissal effectively cost them the game. Uh, he said it was never a, never a penalty either, in his, in his view. Actually, it's, it's like a triple whammy, isn't it? Because Sam Allardyce made the point that you've made many times, the winning manager making the point, that there's like a triple jeopardy here. Well, it is. I mean, the, for me, the law needs changing. I'm, I'm, I don't mean to change denial of an obvious goal-scoring opportunity. That, that in itself, with all the criteria around that particular law, is difficult to put into practice, you know? direction to goal, probability of, of uh, uh, scoring, then this question of defenders. Uh, but and the guy gets suspended the, the, for the next game. Well, the, the triple jeopardy is, one, you're replacing, if you like, that loss of a goal-scoring opportunity by awarding the penalty kick. You're then dismissing the player, uh, which is the big argument for me. Does he need to be dismissed? Um, and then, of course, the third part of it is the suspension. So it is a, it is, it's a triple jeopardy. It's too heavy. Just briefly, the Manchester derby, I say briefly, uh, credit to Mark Clattenburg that it's brief, uh, nil-nil, uh, Glenn. Another, another great game by Clats, though. You know, it, 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 sometimes we, we overlook just how good a referee's been when the game's been as quiet as it was. The game, the game could still have panned out to be um, the, the bit of a snooze draw that it was, but it could still have been full of controversy. It wasn't, because Mark Clattenburg was in the middle and yet again displayed all his qualities. I'm going to breeze through a few other credits to referees because we really want to get into the West Ham-Chelsea game and Matic sending off and what happened around that game. Uh, Neil Swarbrick, I know you felt he refereed well, Keith. Uh, yes. Aston Villa and Swansea. Yes. And there was just one thing there. Uh, Fernandes of Swansea appeared to stick his head rather threateningly into in the face of an opponent and not spotted or acted on, but otherwise you reckon, well, Kevin Friend at Norwich, Martin Atkinson at Stoke and Watford, good advantage, I think, played for Watford's second goal there. Very good. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Roger East uh, at Bournemouth, Andre Mariner, Liverpool, Southampton. I've left out two referees for a reason, one good and one bad, and we'll come to those later. Right, Chelsea losing again at West Ham. Is the manager losing it as well as his team? Yes. <laughs> and and it's, a, it's a huge shame because we love Jose. We love what Jose's brought to the, to the, to the game in England. He's, he's full of character, full of personality, and we love that. We feed off that. 
but he's got to be careful. He, he really needs to have a look at himself now because he's not only tarnishing the, the image of the Premier League, but Chelsea Football Club as well, and his own image, and there's just no need for it. Well, before we bring in Keith on that, the crime sheet read, uh, one sending off, which we'll talk about, Matic, two yellows, five other Chelsea yellow cards, a coach dismissed from the bench, and Mourinho himself dismissed after what's reported to have been a half-time foul mouth rant uh, at the referee, John Moss, uh, in, in the tunnel. Keith, your general view before we go on. The dismissal was correct. I mean, there's, the, the referee's got no option. Uh, he's dragged him back. Uh, you know, the, the reason for the surprise, if you like, to the spectators is the fact that grappling takes place in the penalty area. It's not punished in the way it should be. Here is a grappling offence. He's, he's stopped a promising attack, in my view, and therefore the second yellow is inevitable. Um, my, I have a number of concerns. First of all, I think that with Chelsea and understanding the difficulties that can exist and have existed within the management structure there in terms of how they behave in the public view. I'm always concerned that they don't put a fourth official on there that's got Premier League experience, a Premier League referee who can actually keep things calm. You know, Chris Foy, in fairness, when he was an active referee, was always a good fourth official on that basis because he had that ability to keep things calm. I know you also feel there should be a top-level summit to sort out a problem where Jose had already threatened that every referee he was going to call, that he wasn't happy, was going to be called weak and naive because Arsene Wenger wasn't punished for that comment. It's going a bit rather, a bit childish. It, it, exactly, it's exactly becoming that, Alan, childish. It, just draw a line under it now, Jose, and get back to what you're doing. Which he does very well. He does, okay, yeah, he does do very well, but does it, we can all see the way that he's reacting. Is it, is it no surprise that his team are on such a poor run as well? Get back to doing what you're very good at, coaching a successful football team. Your side's going through a bad period in terms of results at the moment, and that's reflecting your, your own behaviour as well. I mean, I'm, I'm quite clear. I think, you know, in the past, when I've had those public spots have been a problem in terms of damage, potential damage to the Premier League's image. I picked the phone up, said to the manager, look, I want to come along and chat. And I think this is what Mike Riley should do. Yeah. Mike Riley, uh, Bruce Book, who's a, 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 you know, a very experienced administrator, uh, Richard Scudamore, if it's not Scudamore, then some other person representing the Premier League, and go in there and have a chat. You know, we put in place, when I was in the general manager's position, we put in place match delegates who, who view the performance represent the Premier League, can talk to the manager. So he's, the manager's got an avenue in which to express his concerns. He can put his, explain, his, his concerns by way of a telephone call. So he has all those, if you like, avenues to try to discuss things out of the public uh, domain. And I, and I think that Mike Riley needs to take that action, pick the phone up, go on with Richard Scudamore, some might say that's pandering to Chelsea and giving them a meeting and letting them off. Not on a necessarily. Clear it's not it's necessarily so. It's just going to get. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse. If not, somebody has got to offer the olive branch. Someone has to. And if Jose can't or won't do that, then well, then let it be Mike Riley. Let it be Richard Scudamore. Let it be someone from the Premier League. But someone's got to do something because otherwise it becomes a standoff situation. It will just get worse. Yeah. And regardless of whether. Matic was correctly sent off, and you, you, you say he was correctly sent off there, and I thought so as well. I have to say, I thought there were two absolute yellow card offences. Yeah. Got to support the referee, John Moss, who I think you felt had a, had a good go. But even if it, it had been a mistake, it doesn't justify a, a verbal tirade, does it, if that's what happened? The, the, the assistant gave the communication yes. with a very heavy flag yeah. to say this is more than just a foul. Very experienced assistant on the line, more than a foul, and that reduces uh, some options of John Moss to be able to talk in that scenario. So he's issued the second yellow, and, it, and the player's gone. There's not much you can do about it. And That's it was grappling, the law. which see, we want to see. See the assistant, the assistant as well, as well as giving the heavy flag that Keith's talking about. If you look again, he gives it this, and he taps his pocket. Yeah. Now, now the assistant may want, wish to ask himself whether or not he quite needed to do such a yeah. public display because they've got the headsets, they've got the buzzers. You don't have to give it a big, big tap on the pocket. 
You don't have to, because he's, he's really given John very little option at that point. And finally, from a World Cup assistant referee, the offside call in that oh, game. Fabulous. <laughs> Fabulous. Hats off Andy Halliday. By a what kneecap. What a goal. By a kneecap. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Great call. And well done goal line technology. By, yeah. by a yeah. millimetre. That was incredible. Oh, Chelsea were unlucky, really, but it didn't cross the line, did it? No, and, and uh, I think that's, you know, yeah, goal line technology is what's required. And I'd like to see, as I've said, UEFA introduce that into Champions League games in the future. Excellent. Plenty to talk about in the second part of the ref show. I've left a couple of uh, referees out uh, for varying reasons. Mike Dean, uh, Leicester and Crystal Palace, and also... Um, Lee Mason. Now, Lee Mason, back in the Premier League, he's not done many games at the top flight level this season. Uh, he handled uh, Arsenal and Everton. These chaps want to say something about those. And also, lots of championship referees, and one in particular, get a mention. Rejoin us for all of that. <laughs>